Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. Now, our little island is just one and a half by four miles wide. And guys, that's twice as wide as it was when we first, when it was first discovered. I will tell you why on the tour. First, let's go over a few safety rules. Number one, please keep those high-tech safety devices up at all times. You call them ropes. Also, there's no standing on the train at any time. Keep your arms, legs, hands, head, and feet inside the train at all times. And please secure your valuables, guys. Our streets are pretty bumpy. If anything falls out, I'm not allowed to stop by law to help you pick it up. No matter how valuable it is or how much you love him or her. <laughs> now, there's also no smoking or drinking on the train because we're considered public transportation. Now, guys, the tour itself is an hour and a half long and it's fully narrated. That means they're paying me to speak to you. So I ask that you keep your talking to a minimum and keep those cell phones turned down or off. Now, halfway through the tour, we're going to take a 10 minute break. It's the only break they give us. It's at the train depot, and the train depot has really clean bathrooms, ice cold air conditioning, ice cream fudge, popcorn, ice cold water, a lot of cool souvenirs. 10 minutes after that, we'll be at the True Ball stop, and the True Ball stop is just a quick pop on. All right, guys, here we go. I want everybody to look down to your right, look down this little street here, look all the way to the end. You'll see a, the Key West Aquarium. It was built in 1934, and it was our very first tourist attraction. The big, beautiful brick building to my right is called the Customs House. It was built in 1891, and it started out as the Key West Post Office. Then it became a courthouse, and today it's the Art History Museum. If you go in there, you can see an actual bloody uniform that the Great Seminole War when it was in the Italian Army. I think that's just amazing. If you look across the street to the right, you'll see a couple of antique cannons. Behind that is Bell Fisher's Maritime Museum. They all started in 1622 when a Spanish galleon, there was the Atocha, think about 30 miles to the west of us. In 1985, Mel Fisher and his band of treasure hunters found $400 billion worth of sunken treasure. A lot of gold, silver, and emeralds, and a lot of it is still displayed in there today. But guys, if you go in there, you get a chance to buy an actual gold coin from the Atocha. That was actually minted in the 1500s. I'm coming up on the right, and it's all part of the old Navy base. This part was decommissioned in 1974. In the late 1970s, the wealthy businessman purchased it for $17.5 million and tore down all the ugly old Navy buildings, put in a bunch of very beautiful townhouses. Now, also coming up on your right are the presidential gates to that Navy base. At one time, these green gates here were only open for presidents like Taft, Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, and of course, Harry Truman. Harry Truman spent 11 working vacations here in Key West. If you go two blocks up that street, you'll be at Harry Truman's little White House, a very president. Guys, that's 90 miles nonstop water skiing. He did it on one ski, and it took him a little over six hours. Now, when he got to Cuba, he realized he didn't have any identification in his swim trunks, so the Cuban government promptly threw him right in jail. All once they found out he's an American politician, they wanted nothing to do with him. They put him on a boat and they sent him back to us. That is a true story. Up here on the right, they claimed that it's Aaron. Well, guys, she ended up winning. She threw the Key West wife and children out to the street, homeless and penniless. Well, the Key West wife thought that she abandoned that house somehow, some day, some way. They say if you stay there, you might actually see her because they claim she still haunts the place to this day.
Lake Alabama. You can swim all year round in the Atlantic Ocean.
coming into a part of town that was once known as Gato Village. It was kind of a Cuban village within the city limits of Key West. Eduardo Gato, he had about 500. I highly recommend it on a hot, humid day. Just like today, it's a lot of fun. Not. Right next door to the Lighthouse, though, is the Lighthouse Keepers Museum. It's a really interesting museum with a really cold air conditioning. And more importantly, across the street from the Lighthouse will be the Ernest Hemingway House. And the rumor I always heard was that Mrs. Hemingway, her name was Pauline, she always wanted a house near the Lighthouse for a reason. The reason was because Ernest Hemingway liked to go to the bar every night after dinner. When he left the bar, he was usually inebriated. All he had to do was step outside of Duval Street, find the Lighthouse light. He could always find his way home. Sometimes I wish I had a lighthouse in my neighborhood. Hemingway House right across this brick wall. And guys, we're going to talk about it at length the next time we go by it. Right now, I want to tell you my favorite story of the tour. It's the ultimate story of perseverance. It's about a black slave from Maryland who saved all his life to purchase his freedom. The plans are moving into Key West. Well, guys, he got as far as the Carolinas was picked back up and thrown back into slavery. This time he used an axe, cut off a couple fingers, finally made his way to Key West. When he got here, he became a very wealthy and very beloved character on the island. He actually founded the first all-black church in Key West. Coming up on my left, that big beautiful white church is known as the Sandy Cornish Neon Church. The old Sandy Cornish, they say, had a real green thumb. I'm not talking about the one he didn't cut off. He said he could grow things here on the island that no one knew could grow. Things like coffee. Mile marker zero right here on the right. Not only the most photographed sign, it's also the most stolen sign in the Florida Keys. And I can't stop, I got too much traffic behind me, I'm sorry. Now keep those cameras ready, because around the next corner will be a really cool statue of Marilyn Monroe. It's from the movie The Seven Year Edge. It was done by an artist in New Jersey. His name is Jay Seward Johnson, and maybe you heard of his family. They own the Johnson Baby Shampoo Company, a very wealthy New Jersey family. Now that statue is going to sit up here on the right in front of the Blue Tropic Cinema, the U.S. only movie theater. Guys, if you look to the right, look down and look right in front of the blue building. You'll, you can say good afternoon to Miss Norma Jean Baker. Hubba hubba ding ding, boy did she got everything. Look how perfect that makeup is, guys. That's because they painted on there three times a year. That building wasn't just a movie theater, it was also a nightclub. And a Ripley's, believe it or not, today it's a Walgreens. I'm not sure if that's progress by anybody's definition. So I, get out I guess this hotel here on the left that's done in Art Deco style. They got a swimming pool up on the roof, guys. I don't know if I want a hotel room right under the swimming pool. I went out and I asked that man if this was uh, the one, and he said yes, and he put me on it. And then another driver took it over and left. Now, two blocks to the right up until 1974 was a U.S. Navy base. Uh, you know, and that made the 600 block at the Vol Street a pretty wild, crazy 